This is the No More Wasted Days podcast, and we're your hosts, Sarah Kaufman Bradstreet and Heather PG. Grab your favorite NA drink and listen as we share vulnerable stories so you never feel alone on your alcohol-free journey. And gain insights from us as we break down our most used tips and strategies that have kept us alcohol-free. It's time to break free from wasting any more of your days to the drinking blackout hangover cycle. Welcome to another episode of the No More Wasted Days podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Sarah. And I'm Heather. And today we are going to talk about something that so many people ask me about. And when I was brand new to my alcohol-free journey, I didn't even know about this. So I'm excited to bring it to all of you so you have this knowledge early in your journey. We're going to be talking about the sobriety toolbox. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to call it a sobriety toolbox, a sobriety toolkit, a sobriety tool belt. Whatever you can hold all your tools in that will help you with your sobriety, we're going to talk all about it. Did you know about this early on in your journey? I have to say no, I did not. Yeah. I I, I couldn't connect the dots Yeah, in the first month or two. I'm glad that I wasn't alone in this because this was something, and when people mentioned it to me, I feel like I was a few years into my journey and I was like, excuse me, come again? So I'm super excited to bring this to everybody. But first, I just want to check in and see how's everything going, Heather? Well, everything's good. I've been pretty stressed about some things in my personal life. I am now a dance theater mom, and it's wonderful, but it's all brand new. It's a lot of time, and energy with my three-year-old, and I am so thankful that I do not drink anymore because we had a really long day and night last night. I was exhausted. And what I did was just go outside, look up in the sky, enjoy the moon, enjoy the peace. And when I woke up this morning, I felt hungover. I felt like I ran like a 10K and drank a six pack, if I'm being 100% honest. You did a lot yesterday. I woke up. I was like disoriented, like what year is it type Mm. of vibe. So I took good care of myself. I did my morning routine, my gratitude. I've got my water, and I'm ready. Good. The dance stuff. I used to do that with my daughter way back in the day because she's 13 now. And I think think she did dance up through first grade and started like when she was three. We started really early. And I was always well, the dance mom. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was telling Heather off the recording, oh, yeah, I was a dance mom. <laughs> yeah, I have like a Fitbit, and I walked two miles just during the rehearsal. Yeah. And along with like the activity of your body, your brain, you're having to interact with other people's kids, which yes, I it's like I'm patient with my own kids to a point. But with other people's kids, you feel like, oh, I've really got to, you know, speak with my kind words and make sure they just don't know you as well. So it's a whole balancing act. But I remember when I was a dance mom that I would get angry because it got in the way of my drinking. Ah, I had a lot of that that I would notice, like this resentment towards my kids' activities because, ugh, this is like, and I wouldn't actually think like, this is when I usually drink, but it was very much this, I would rather be home drinking. So it would, and I finally clued in that it made me irritated because it was getting in the way of my drinking, especially the concerts. I was just like, oh, I got to make sure my daughter is ready. I shouldn't have a drink at dinner because I'm the dance mom to be backstage. And I always feel bad that I had that resentment towards my kids' activities when they were younger. And now I don't have it. It's one of the most freeing things to just be like, oh, I am actually just at my kids' activity and I get to sit back, enjoy it. It's not taking up any of my, what I would consider my personal time, it's me getting to be a mom. That's a really great perspective. And as you know, I'm still a toddler in sobriety, a 44-year-old mom with an almost four-year-old. I could see my former drinking self trying to like put it in my Yeti or planning around it and sneaking it and hiding it. I'm very grateful that I don't have that to take up some of the mental space because Mm -hmm. I had zero spoons about nine o'clock last night, so. You had no more Fs to give, as I always Mm -mm. say. No, (laughs) not one. Well, thank goodness you had like the most, it was the most beautiful moon here. I got to see it as I was driving home from choir. A few almost driving off the side of the road, trying to look at it. Where are you, moon? I still see you, moon. (laughs) 
How are things going for you? Well, things are good. I feel like I'm going in a million different directions. I'm having a hard time just finding my my focus. Like, where do I want to put on my focus right now? Because I have so many amazing ideas for No More Wasted Days, and I'm so ready to implement them, but we still don't live in a house. And I go back and forth all the time, like, well, we're doing okay. How we live is great. Like, it's it works for our family. It is basically normal. I guess if somebody just walked onto our land and said, oh, this is like, you have to walk from your trailer to your house to do your laundry. Yeah. So you just wear a raincoat if it's raining. It's like things that have become totally normal to me and how we live. And so sometimes it's hard to be like, do we really need to push so hard to finish this house? Or can I work on things that I feel like are more important to me right now in this moment? So I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm just having a it hard does. time finding that purpose. And I've been doing a lot of my meditations. I've been really trying to focus on the purpose. If you are a call on your angels or your spirit guides people like me, I have been trying to call on my spirit guides to just help me, help me finish this dang house. I've been saying all the time, just help me finish this house. Help me figure out how to finish this house because I have other things I want to do. And we're close that I think that's I know I've been saying it for a while. I think it's harder when you're like, OK, we have one more thing to do and then we can call the inspector and we're working on that one more thing right now. We can call the inspector and get our temporary certificate of occupancy and finish our kids rooms completely and move them in and get our trailer off the land. So I'm just chugging through. The one thing I know is if I was drinking through this, there's no there's just no way me and Ryan talk no. about it all the time. There's no way drinking us could have even managed this. But it just would have made it a million times worse. I wouldn't have the thought in my brain to even step back and think, well, where do you want your purpose to be right now? Where do you want to put your focus? Drinking me yeah. was always living in chaos. And it just added to the life's chaos. Right. And you used, you're a runner. And believe it or not, I was too in my 20s. And the, you know the third leg of the race mm -hmm. is always the hardest. It yeah. sounds like you're in that third leg. Yeah. Where it's like you got to take your special energy chew that you brought along just for this moment. <laughs> yep. Turn on your best running song and put your blinders on and just get done. So I need to just remember that. <sighs> we'll get there. We will really, <laughs> yeah. really get there. I keep. I write that. That's one of my affirmations every day. We're going to finish this house. Absolutely. We're going to talk about affirmations in our sober toolbox because they're definitely one of mine. And we're going to hop into that topic right now. But first, I just want to remind you that the Daymakers community is always open for you. People are always asking, how can I work with you and Heather? This is one of the ways. We do group coaching calls each week. You get to hang out with Heather and I. And you can ask us anything on these calls when we get done sharing on our topic and really get to know us. There's a private group message thread. We do challenges some months. We have a book club going on. We just have a lot of cool things happening in the Daymakers community. So check out the link in the show notes and see if it's a good fit for you. And Heather also has a one-on-one -on -one coaching that she offers. Yeah, I have some spots available. Check out the link below. We can work one-on-one -on -one and talk about your toolkit or wherever you are on your journey. I can yeah. meet you where you're at. Awesome. All right, let's dive into this. So in the beginning, I gave a little bit about what a sober toolbox or toolkit is. And to just define it loosely for you, it's a collection of resources and strategies you collect on your alcohol-free journey. And these resources and strategies help you stay sober when the journey gets tough. So it's super important. And when I say I had never heard about it, I know I had all of these things early on my journey. I just didn't know there was a cool word for it in the recovery community. So, Heather, what did you kind of think it was at first? Honestly, my first 30 days was just survival. It mm -hmm. was just get through it. And I didn't realize that I was learning tools for the toolbox. And about four months in, three to four months being alcohol-free, I had found something online about your sober toolbox traveling. And we were going on our first sober vacation, you know, flying. Our daughter was 15 months at the time, I had just got diagnosed with cancer. My professional life was in teetotal shambles. And when I heard about it, I was like, ah, ha, ha. And I actually got a bag and I put my quit lit, my journal. I wrote a plan A and a plan B. I knew when the no more wasted days calls were. I knew to lean into the thread. 
text or call other folks who were sober, alcohol free. And that's when I figured out an actual box or a bag. I love that you had a real bag. Yeah. Like full of the the tools that we use. That's so smart. And to have a journal or a a notebook where the plans are written out so you can go look at them or put them in your notes in your phone, put them wherever you're going to see them. Because I think the thing is, sometimes we get into this moment in our alcohol-free journey where we're spiraling. We're going, oh my God, oh my God. I'm having a fun, fun side effect of perimenopause right now is like extreme anxiety on some of the days to where I think, I think I'm having a panic attack that's lasting all day long. And it's like not a, not a big panic. It's like this little teeny tiny panic attack that just won't complete itself. <laughs> oh, and this yes. was me like on Saturday. And I had to think, what can you do? And the cool thing is the things in my sober toolbox are the things I can use in that moment. So all of these things that I use for my sobriety, I can use now when I have this strange anxiety popping up. And don't worry, I do have a doctor's appointment set up in May. So I finally get to talk to somebody about this and find out if all my strategies are working and what I should be doing. And luckily, it only happens very randomly. But let's talk about some kind of generic items that you can put in your sober toolbox early in your sobriety. And this is kind of what I tell the daymakers. Get some of these things in, and we're going to list off a lot of things for all of you. And what I want you to know is that you do not have to put all of these in. These are just ideas. So if one speaks to you, then just say, okay, I'm going to do that one. So I'm going to kick off the first one, and I'm giving you the second one because I think you have a better list for it. (laughs) So okay, the first one is non-alcoholic drinks. This is so simple, but when a craving hits, time to hit the panic button. A non-alcoholic drink will help. It will not make the craving totally go away, but it will make your brain go, thank goodness you're giving me what I wanted. And it'll take a little while for your brain to figure out like, oh, it wasn't alcohol though. So, and and then you can kind of, you give yourself that little extra time to then start fighting everything. So have spindrifts on hand, ginger ale. Diet Coke. That's the one that I've started being like, God, I love Diet Coke. I'm going to keep those little mini cans around. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, Gosh, what are my other ones? Kombucha. I almost forgot kombucha. I love it so much. And um, ginger beer. There's just all different things. And lemonade, iced tea. Fill your fridge. If you used to have a beer fridge, now you have it in a drink fridge. And fill that thing. So when you have a craving, you can go have one of those drinks. And it'll help just push it off for a second. Absolutely. I do want to say about the non-alcoholic drinks, I encourage my clients early on to take some in their car if they're going somewhere new. Yeah. To have a little cooler of drinks with them so that if they do have a craving, they can have that ginger ale or Diet Coke. And like you always say, Sarah, your brain doesn't know the difference. Mm -hmm. It gives it, it takes a little moment for it to figure it out. All right. The next one, Heather, I always feel like has a great list on this. So the next one is Sober Podcast. And the reason they're important is they give you, I mean, it gives a lot of information and you can put your earbuds on, listen to them while you're going on a rage walk for 15, 20 minutes and just learn and know that you're not alone in your experience. Apart from this podcast, they're Sober Powered, Sobriety Uncensored, This Naked Mind, There's so many that you can listen to in the early days. Just put one in your ear, even if you half listen Mm -hmm. while you're multitasking and doing the dishes, something may land for you that speaks to you in that moment. Sober podcasts were really helpful for me. And I love the list that Heather gave. And beyond that, there's gotten to be so many more out there now that you can actually just go search alcohol cravings and it'll probably Mm -hmm. come up with the top ones. What can I do for fun now that I'm alcohol free? You're going to go find a list. It is just such a great resource. And sometimes I'll listen to one for like 10 minutes and that's all I need. And I don't finish the episode and it's just kind of like, I'll save that for later. Thank you. You got me through this moment. And the next thing that I love to do, and Heather mentioned it with this, while I'm listening to a sober podcast, I like to go take a walk or I'm going to pair the next two together. I like to go take a walk or I like to take on a small project. So it's kind of good multitasking and it helps my brain focus on something else and find something else to do. So I don't know about you guys. Maybe you're very organized and very put together. (laughs) I am not. And I have a lot of little piles that I can go through. 
So if I'm like, okay, I need something to do and it's pouring rain outside, I'm going to listen to a sober podcast and I'm going to go through the stupid pile on our couch. <laughs> I'm going to get through that really quick or I'm going to organize the table really quick between me and Ryan's chairs. Things that I know won't take me a long time, but will just get my mind onto something else. Do you? I know you do walks. How about yes. the small projects? Like, did you make a list in the beginning of small projects or do you just know? I did. I can remember being in my car on a, a No More Wasted Days call, listening to your topic and writing it on the back of an envelope. Mm -hmm. And then I went in and conquered the mail pile. I vividly remember that. Or like a junk drawer. Everybody mm -hmm. has one. And that will occupy your time, your hands, your mind. Yeah. And you get a little hit of dopamine when you do mm -hmm. one of those, when you just complete a little project from start to finish. That's why I tell people to don't be like, and now I'm going to go organize my whole closet. That's a weekend project. Okay. I'm just going to let you know. <laughs> That's not yeah. a, oh shit, I've got a craving. I got to work through it. I'm having a moment. I'm feeling anxious. These are little projects that you can take on. So the next one is meetings and community. Like I said earlier, I was on a No More Wasted Days call and it jogged me to go complete a task. I had learned a lot about, it was actually like goal setting. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning of my journey, I was in another sobriety community that had tons of meetings in the morning, in the evening. And you can get online and there's AA meetings that are available 24-7. Mm -hmm. And I've put those in my ear and just listened. I didn't share. I didn't talk. I just listened. And there's also like sober meetups. There's a ton of them if you want to like browse on Facebook or just browse online and look for sober meetups. You can just lurk and see what speaks to you. And cool little thing that we talk about in the Daymakers community, if you go, stay 15 minutes. And if you totally don't like it, leave. Yeah, you're allowed. We're giving you permission. And community is so important because oftentimes the beginning of an alcohol-free journey can feel really lonely. You feel like, I don't want to tell anybody I'm doing this because I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know if I'm fully committed to this. So having some sort of community. And I think it's one of the great parts of social media is that we are lucky enough to be able to find a community for anything we want to do. Like I'm part of so many different communities with the different interests that I have. And it's just nice. It's like I'm part of homesteading communities. So when things are happening with my ducks, I can go in the group and say, who's had this happen with their ducks? Like, it's just the same as that with being alcohol free. You can go in and you can go, who's had this happen on their alcohol free journey? Help me out. And the cool thing about Facebook is most of the time you can post anonymously now. So yeah. you can even just say, put it anonymous and ask some questions and people will answer. Join that community. Don't be afraid. And as you get more used to your alcohol free identity, Find some courage to do some in-person stuff. To me, community was the key. Mm -hmm. And that's what I attribute my success to get through the first six months when my entire life fell apart. So it is very, very key. I just want to stress that. Yeah, it really is. I found a Facebook community. It was part of Annie Grace's book. I looked up, um, gosh, what was this naked mind? And I was like, is there some group? And I found one of hers and I was like, okay, I'll hop in there. There were like 50,000 people, but it mm -hmm. helped a lot. And I posted when I felt moved, but more I just read and it just made me go, oh, I'm not the only person who's read this book and my life has changed because of it. And I'm not the only person who is struggling in this area. So go find that community. Maybe it's the Daymakers. Maybe it's something else. The cool thing is there's a lot of communities out there now. Okay, I'm going to kind of group my next three in my list together because I do them all together. So journaling. My journaling is my mantras and my affirmations and my gratitudes. Every day I write down five things that I'm grateful for. And then every day I write down, I think I have seven affirmations right now. We have people in the community that have three affirmations. We have people in the community that have more. So that's totally up to you. But I do both of those things to retrain my brain every single day. Every single day I start out with gratitude, even on the crummy days. And it helps me see that I have a lot of good stuff in my life. So even when I'm stressed out, I feel like I can't find my purpose. I can say, I'm really grateful for the moon last night. 
I'm really grateful for sun shining as, on us as we got to work on our deck. Like just start writing down those things you're grateful for from the day before, and it is going to put you into the right mindset. It is such a cool thing to have in your toolbox and how you can use it when you are freaking out. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm so stressed. I just want to drink. Stop. Look around. What do you have around you that you're grateful for? It's going to change your mindset. It's going to feel stupid the first time you do it. You're not going to want to do it. You're going to be angry. I'm only speaking from experience. <laughs> and Heather is agreeing. Mm -hmm. But just start looking around and going, okay, I'm grateful for my dog. I'm grateful for, and it'll start all of a sudden, it just starts rolling. So do you do journaling? I know you do journaling of some sort, but do you wrap in there your gratitude and affirmations? I have a very specific practice. So with gratitude, I text another day maker every morning and it changes. I mix it up. Then I have a five minute gratitude journal that a friend sent me that really gets you to think about other things that you're thankful for, especially when you're in that space where like, oh, I'm just thankful that I have a roof on my head, over my head or on my head. I don't know. But it really helps you kind of stretch your gratitude brain. And then I have a journal that I write in and a journal on my phone, on an app. It's very me. It's very all over the place. But then you've got it like wherever you need it. Yep. Whenever you need it, you've got all of your stuff. One journal that I just started, because I've always wanted to do a journaling practice where I like wrote down what I did every single day. So one day I can look back at it and go, oh yeah. But I, I just never did it because it felt kind of overwhelming. I found this line a day, five-year journal. And on each page, it gives you five of the tiniest lines to write for April 20, what is today? April 24th, 2024. And then the next grouping can be April 24th, 2025, and then April 24th, 2026. So you're just going through and you are writing as little detail as you can as possible because you don't have a lot of room. So like on yesterday's, I just wrote, we worked on our deck railing, we made a big mistake, and we had to redo all of our work. I know that I'll remember that next year. I'll go, oh, yeah, I remember that. And then, and then I, wrote, well, I went to choir practice. I really love sitting next to this friend. She makes me laugh so hard. That's it. So when people are talking journaling or any of these different tools, think, how can I make this work for me? And does it actually support my alcohol-free journey in some way or my mental health? And for me, it does. Like those things make me just reflect and feel good. The next one is hobbies. This is so important, guys. We've talked about finding yourself in your alcohol-free journey, rediscovering yourself. We've talked about this a lot. Let's start finding some hobbies to do. What? are your current hobbies, Heather? This is so key, and I know I've said it on other episodes. Currently, my hobby is maximalist decor, and I'm just dreaming and scheming, looking on Pinterest, going to Lowe's hardware and getting paint swatches and hanging them on the wall just to see how it would look. Mm -hmm. So, and I consider that a hobby. Yeah. So that's like my current escape, so to speak, when I'm stressed with work and mama -ing and all the things. What about you? My current hobbies are probably singing in my choir, doing my practice with that when I can, when I can fit it in. Definitely listening to music has become a new hobby for me again. It's one I've always had, but I think forever the musician in me felt like to really make music my hobby, I needed to be creating it. And I've changed my mindset on that. And now I just am an avid listener and it's super fun. And it, it really knocks me out of a bad headspace and gets me into a good headspace. So it's definitely in my toolbox. Definitely. Me and another daymaker have a shared playlist on our Apple Music. Oh, that's cool. F to celebrate our three year, we have the same sobriety day. And it's really cool to see like what she adds and what I add. And it's kind of fun. So that could be a hobby for some yeah. of the listeners. Like if yeah. you have a friend or connect with another person that's on the journey, share a playlist. Yeah. See what you create. I really like that. My other one that I'm really into right now is my weight training and learning more and more about weight training, creating my own workout plans and watching the, they call it progressive overload and just kind of learning all about that stuff. It's gotten me really jazzed about working out again because I feel like I was stuck in a rut for a while and not figuring it out. And now I'm excited. I go to what I call mom's gym. It is just the room I'm sitting in right now, but it's in the morning and no one's here and I can play my music really loud. 
and work out. So yeah, it's pretty fun. Uh, let's see. The last few things you could think about of putting in your in your so- sober toolbox in your early sobriety would be an app tracker. I used a very simple one and I still do. Mine is the Nomo app, N-O-M-O. No bells and whistles, just counts your numbers in the background. (laughs) But it motivates me. It works. It serves its purpose. Heather uses a different one. Yeah. At this juncture, I use I Am Sober. It's free. It's part of my morning routine to check in that I will not drink today. And it gives a positive message once you do that. And it lets you track how much money you've saved and how much time you've gotten back. And it's that when people post the the circles the, from their I Am Sober app in the community, I'm always like, oh, that looks pretty cool. <laughs> but I think I think tracking days is really beneficial to me. In any habit I try to start, I am always trying to track it in some way to see how I'm really doing. And I think it's one thing to say, like, I know in the beginning, maybe you're just trying to get a few more dry days and tracking, actually tracking those is going to be much more helpful than saying like, yeah, I think I was sober more than I was drinking this past month. Well, do you know? Because that's kind of me with like washing my face at night as my current one that I'm struggling with, but working on. So I fill in a little circle with green. And if I don't do it, I fill in a circle with red. And I just try to take it in as data that says, hey, you actually aren't doing great at that. You think you are, but you only got it 50% this month. Or, hey, you went from 0% last month to 50% this month. So there's all different things where you can track all this. The very last one for my sober toolkit that I'm always checking on are my routines. How are my routines doing? And we have podcast episodes on a lot of these topics that we've hit on very briefly. So you can go listen to them in more detail. And we have one on routines. So you can go back into our, our library of episodes and check that out. But man, routines are so important. They make it so you don't have to think about what's coming next. So when you're Heather and you're getting home really late from a dan- being a dance mom, in the morning time, you don't have to think, what do I do in the morning to make myself feel like a human? Instead, you have a morning routine. You're just ready for it. And I think a lot of people's morning routines, and no judgment because this used to be mine, roll out of bed, hop in the shower, get ready for work, go to work. And if that is your routine and you're saying, okay, that's my routine right now, you've got one. Because I think a lot of people will say, well, I don't even have a routine. I don't do anything that's a constant habit. Yes, you do. What you're doing right now for your mornings is probably your routine. But maybe you want to beef it up a little bit and make sure it's adding in things for you that start you off on the right foot or end your day on the right foot. Or this is the I think this one is the most beneficial one in the beginning, but also the hardest. Or you have a routine for when you know your cravings are going to start and you know exactly what you're going to do so you don't have to think about it. So my morning routine is wake up, put on comfortable workout clothes. I have changed that, you guys. I feel like I have changed that and it feels like the smartest thing I've ever done. I work out at home and for whatever reason, I was always putting on tight workout leggings and and I was like, oh my God, I can work out with loose sweatpants. Like no one sees me. What am I doing? <laughs> so I like totally put on my loose clothes. It feels good. And then I go do my meditation and then I do my gratitudes and my affirmations and my little one aligned day journal. And then it's time to work out. And it's like, that's just my routine. It's easy. I don't have to think about it. That's my routine that's most established for me. What's your routine that's most established for you? You inspire me with the morning routine so much. I have a three-year-old, so. I did not have one when I had three-year-olds, just so you know. (laughs) My morning routine is, it works. My evening routine is what gives me the most joy. Mm Mm-hmm. And it goes in phases, and I won't go into tons of detail, but daily reflection, either a bath or a shower, good skincare, read a little book, try to meditate. I have a bedtime for myself, really good sleep hygiene, and that really, really works. And I try to set myself up for success the next day, like laying out clothes, getting the coffee prepared, packing lunches, anything that's going to make my morning less chaotic. See, I'm jealous of your, when you talk about your evening routine, I'm like, I wish I had any ounce of energy in the evening to do that. We've, we've discovered in the day makers that part of my problem with washing my face at night is I'm way too tired. So I need to back it way up 
and it needs to happen the moment jammies go on my body, which happens to be, if I don't have anywhere to go, it happens to be 5 p.m. or 6 p.m., just so everybody knows. <laughs> Same. I always tell the day makers in our evening calls that it's pajama time on the East Coast. Oh, yeah. And then I'm always there on the West Coast. Well, it's already pajama time here, too. <laughs> <laughs> we're, a, we're a casual group. <laughs> Very. But I think those routines, I think people overlook them. I think people overthink them and think, oh, my God, it has to be the most elaborate, beautiful plan. No, it doesn't. If you could see me during my morning routine... I look like a hot mess, but I feel good. I'm like, got my headphones on, listening to my meditation. And when I do feel in in my life, like right now, I am like, oh, I have more anxiety happening. I'm like, where can I put more time in my routine to support this in my day? And I'll say, you know, maybe I can do longer meditations. So I look at my meditation app and I find some longer ones. And I'm like, I can do that. I can make that time for myself. So really start looking at these things and Filling your sober toolbox and thinking, what are things we can add in? There are just a few more. Those are kind of the most, I think, the basic that we went through. And I'm looking at a list. Heather and I also made a list that's what have we now added to our list. And I did want to touch on those, but I also don't want this to go for 5 million years because I know your time is precious. So one thing I've been working on is limiting my screen time. I am noticing that it's really affecting how I think about myself my anxiety levels, my productivity levels. So I am really trying to limit that screen time. I do it by putting my phone away before we watch TV at night. As a family, we always watch one show together at nighttime and I don't bring my phone with me because I'm a total phone addict. I'm a total addict, guys. News flat. <laughs> Same. So and that's it's something I've challenged the daymakers to start thinking about because there's so much research coming out about our kids and screens. But if it's affecting our kids, the screen time, it is affecting us. And it's time to start parenting yourself with that. And I know you may be thinking, well, screens are helping my sobriety because that's where I see Sarah on TikTok. That's where I see that's where I see Heather on Instagram. Yeah, you do see us there. But Find a time that's not right before bed or just start trying to lessen that time on your phone and listen to us in your ears instead while you're doing something. So, yeah, that's my little thing there. So what I have found very helpful is therapy. I've done internal family systems, cognitive behavioral therapy. I also have a sober coach and I'm currently in EMDR, which is basically to heal from trauma. And I've had a lot of it. So it's really helpful at this juncture. And I've, I've always been in therapy, but I've kind of beefed it up to set myself, my future self up for success and be more present so that I can have more joy. I'm also doing self-directed dialectal behavioral therapy. And that's really interesting. I'm not a therapist, but the social worker and the coach in me is really liking it. Yeah, learning more and more about it. I like learning about that too. One of the Daymakers members sent me a workbook and I check it out from time to time and I'm like, oh, these activities are so cool. Yeah. I've also been growing my gratitude as I spoke earlier. And in that gratitude, I'm trying to write something that I'm thankful for that I have done to grow myself that day, whether it's movement or using the DBT book even if it's something simple to express gratitude to myself for what I'm doing. Yeah. In I terms like of the work. I need to start doing, I would love to get a nighttime reflection happening. And I think that it would really help me end my day on a little bit better note because nighttime is when I'm the crabbiest. It's when I'm tired. <laughs> I laugh because my poor family has to put up with me in the evening. And I am always just like, oh, I don't, I don't end the day on the most positive note. I start like, I'm like, one of those people, it would just drive some people crazy. I'm like just a ray of sunshine in the morning. I'm like today's <laughs> going to be a great day. <laughs> I really do naturally start my day that way. I just don't naturally end that way. So I think that some reflection at the end of the day would really, really help me. So I'm glad that you brought that up. So we've given you all these different things. What could you put in your sober toolbox? And we have like, just so you know, we have so many more listed. So if you are like, oh, we want more than Go find us on social media and say, tell us more about your sober toolbox. Tell us more of these ideas because we need them. 
we will, but we're both just going to go through really quick, like a quick answer. Like what is in my sober toolbox? If somebody asked me, well, what's in your sober toolbox? Mine are meditations, affirmations, podcasts, and I do sober podcasts and entertaining podcasts. They're all in my sober toolbox. Music, hobbies, the daymakers, my social media. And I know I talked about like, oh, don't do social media. But for me, that means writing emails to all of you, creating TikToks for all of you. That is part of my sober toolbox, believe it or not, just making sure I'm making that connection with other people. Um, Doing research on sobriety is really important to me. My kids are in my sober toolbox, my husband, my animals, and exercise and eating, any kind of eating. Yeah. Looking at food as fuel has been life-changing for me. And as fuel for my brain sometimes. Oh, I'm not doing well emotionally. Well, you know what? A little piece of chocolate might help that out. Yeah. I was sitting in my car last night eating a banana. I always have like a banana in my purse. It's like my emergency snack. It produces GABA, Mm -hmm. which we need. It chills your brain out. So that's the perfect snack. Okay, what is in your toolbox? So in my toolbox at this time, with my routines, gratitude, movement, affirmations, daily reflection, the hobbies. I'm really busy at this point, and I mentioned the decor earlier, but My daughter and I are doing some planting of vegetables and different flowers and using HALT. Mm -hmm. Um, I have used that every day, multiple days in the past couple of weeks. And leaning into the daymakers, going to our calls, checking in on the thread, therapy, coaching, and getting really curious about this one precious life that we get. I know I talk about that all the time, but just get curious. Yeah. About something. And really leaning into my support system. I have friends that I call or text and or just send like an emoji to you. Mm -hmm. And they send one back. It's a way just to connect. Even if you don't if you don't have time to text a sentence, you can just text an emoji. Yeah. Sometimes when I am scrolling social media and I honestly do try to limit it. One of the reasons I go on there is to find a funny reel to send my sister. Like I go on with the mission of it's got to be so good that I know it's going to make her laugh and it's going to make me laugh really hard. And then I'll send it and then I'm done. Like it's like my little job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the way, I- way for me to get my unhealthy dopamine from scrolling, but feel like I'm connecting with my sister. And it's, I don't know, it's pretty cool. I do the same thing with my bestie. It gives your scrolling a purpose. <laughs> I really hope that this topic helped. Heather and I really wanted to bring in some more of the basics for all of you and remind you that this is the stuff you need to be working on. So if you were mentioning things in the toolbox that we have that you're like, I need to get better at that, then see if it works for you. Start doing the research. Go listen to another podcast episode about that idea and add it to your toolbox and really do think what's in my sober toolbox. Make a notes on your phone. And in that little note section in your phone, say sober toolbox or whatever you want to call it. If you're freaked out, somebody might open your notes and see it. Just say my toolbox. And then in there, list off all the things. So when you are feeling stressed, you feel like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get through this moment. You have all these ideas. I really hope that this helped. If you're interested in joining our community, the Daymakers, please check out the link in our show notes and also one-on-one coaching with Heather. Both of us actually have coaches that we work with in different areas. I think it is so important. If there is something that's important to you in your life, having somebody walk with you a little more closely is just the greatest situation to be in. So go check out the link in the show notes and be sure to follow us on social media. Those links to all of our social media are always in the show notes. And please follow this podcast if you haven't already and give us a rating. I love looking at the reviews that people write. So if this is landing for y'all, leave us a review. It truly makes our day and it helps our podcast stay visible for folks who may need us in their ear. So do that and we will see you next week. Bye y'all.